Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is um, October 8th, 2014, and um, we're following up on a show, oh, I don't know, was it a month ago? A couple of months, a little more than that, maybe, um, where we started thinking about annotations together, and um, and then Dan Dorenberg um, and I have become friends, and, <laughs> which is great. And he's been um, guiding us and thinking about um, using now comment. And I thought, you know what? Let's do a whole show. And he has some friends from Ohio. And I said, I love Ohio. Let's, um, <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, invite them on. So great, you're going to we're going to introduce you. And Joe Paricio is with us, and uh, Chris speak out of a parent. Um, I will introduce us as saying that uh, Joe, Chris, and I are, uh, we work together on youthvoices.net, and um, our students work together. Uh, so let's let people introduce themselves a little more. So we're going to look tonight at, if you don't mind, now comment, um, as many details as we want to get out. My goal, I'll say right at the top, is... Um, what I've been calling and other people what I think call social reading, reading together and trying to do it across schools and um, across uh, different projects and so forth. And I think, you know, now comment does a lot more than that, but that's one of the things I want to talk about. Um, and I teach in the Bronx. I teach uh, sixth and seventh graders. Um, and I'm pretty new to now comment, but we'll... Um, we'll figure this out together. Again, my name is Paul Allison. Uh, why don't we go right across and um, get other introductions. Dan, you go first. Introduce yourself, if you would. Okay, sure. I'll, I'll keep it really short. Um, I'm Dan Dornberg. Um, I've, I'm the developer of Now Comment. I'm not the programmer or the coder, but it's my idea, and we've been I've been shepherding this along now for, you know, a good number of years. And... Um, now comment is basically a way of doing, you know, sort of a threaded discussion like a normal, like a like a standard online forum, but showing it in context with the document. So, um, so if you're if someone makes a comment on a particular sentence or paragraph or whatever, you can actually see the text that their comments referring to. Um, we have all kinds of other features. It's a really high-end, full-featured kind of package, but that, that's really the gist of it. And um, I guess I'll stop there and let other folks talk. Mm -hmm. And it's free, just to mention. And, and it is free. Off. Yeah, it's free. It's, it's, been, it's been around for about five or six years, and it's, it's very, very stable also, I will say. Great. Welcome. Um, Chris, do you want to check in? No, say hi. Uh, yeah, hi, I just got out of parent-teacher conferences. Yeah, nice suit. I like Thank you. Yeah, I got dressed up just for you. <laughs> uh, um, uh, so I just started using Now Comment with my students today. So I teach in um, Salt Lake City, Utah, uh, and I teach high school English and media at Judge Memorial. So, yeah, thanks. Good, huh? And Joe, we'll have you introduce yourself, and then we'll hear from our new guests. <laughs> cool. Um, I'm Joe Baraiso, and I teach in East Oakland at Fremont High. And um, my current line is seniors. Uh, what do I have? English and AP Lit. And I'm on Now Common right now, and we're going to start it on Monday on site. Oh, great. Right. Okay. Cool. So, Dan, do you want to introduce the folks that you helped us invite here tonight? Sure. Um, well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just give a, a, a very global introduction and, and let them then introduce themselves in a little bit more detail. Um, Lisa Campbell is an educational consultant with uh, Hamilton County Consortium. This is not the exact name, but Hamilton County Consortium, which is, a, I, I, as I recall, a four-state consortium. Consortium, and now comment historically was I always envisioned it as being something that was would would be used at the university and the college level, and uh, I don't remember where, but Lisa, you know, heard good things about it from someone, and she introduced it to a gathering of K-12 teachers, 
just you know told them about it, what she had heard, what it did, that kind of thing. And um, then Mary Moore, who I think you're showing now, said, "Well, that sounds interesting. I'd like to try that." So she was the first person to ever use now comment who wasn't higher ed, and she in fact was using it with middle school. Um, and we've since in and this is all in the since greater Cincinnati area so um, she used it with middle schools we've now had it's gone down as, as low as second grade uh, in Reading Ohio and uh, so Mary is the middle school uh, Lisa is the educational consultant and Jenny is a high school teacher and I knew that you wanted to have high school represented too so uh, that's my group of Ohioans spanning the uh, age and educational spectrum. Well, welcome, Mary, Jenny, and Lisa. Do you want to give uh, a little more detailed introductions to yourselves? Um, Mary, go ahead. Uh, sure. Great. Can you hear me OK? We can. Okay. Are you familiar with Hangouts, or is this a first? No, I have not used Hangouts, but I've got an old microphone. That's why I'm asking. Oh. Um, <laughs> go ahead. I, I teach at Nagel Middle School, uh, seventh grade. And, um, you know, as you heard from Dan, you know, my students love Now Comment. We have been using it for a number of years. Uh, this year, honestly, we have not gotten into it yet because I was out for a little bit. So, um, actually, we're coming up to be using it again this year um, in about another three weeks. Cool. We'll have to hear how you've done it in the past. Welcome. Lisa. Mm -hmm. Hi, I actually, as Dan said, I, I uh, ran across Now Comment, and um, I don't even really know how. It was just one of those, um, you know, you're you're surfing the net, the internet for tools, teacher tools of any kind, um, and with the park assessments, the assessment consortia that Ohio has aligned with um, is the park uh, as opposed to the Smarter Balance. But regardless, they would all be online. Ultimately, our students are going to have to respond to text on in an online format in the future. Um, as soon as this spring um, and earlier for some of the performance assessments. So I was searching for tools that um, would in, integrate technology and and have um, give students the opportunity to respond electronically or digitally to text and improve their keyboarding skills, among other things, and ran across this. I actually, um, in addition to working at Hamilton County Educational Service Center, um, and that's how I know Mary, and I do know of Jenny. We've communicated a little bit um, just by email, and she's in, in the Cincinnati area also. Um, and so I also teach at Mount St. Joseph University, uh, graduate students in the special education department. And so I started using Now Comment with my graduate students. Um, and I would embed it as a as a link into my Blackboard courses, so that um, students could um, at the time. This was even before there have been so many improvements. Um, before we were able to use. Um, PDFs and upload those. You could only take kind of live um, text, but you could also, you know, upload Word documents. And so I would have students um, peer edit across uh, in now comment. So they would post, and of course those were graduate students, um, and they would post their papers, their research papers, their thesis papers, different drafts of it. Uh, and it was just a nice way for me to be able to manage their peer editing um, without having to go to a lot of different places and because I embedded it into Blackboard it was all right there. So that was my initial experience with it personally as a teacher was with graduate students um, at the college level and so then I started um, presenting it to teachers as a, in context as I was working with them and that's how I know Mary is I was working with Nagel Middle School at the time and presented it as a tool um, she probably embraced it mo the most in that particular building, but several other teachers have used it um, in that building, and we've also, as Dan said, taken it down as low as second grade. I have a, a team of second grade teachers in Reading Community what's Schools. A, what's that that are, like? what, what do second graders do on 
on there? Um, well, basically what happens typically is the teacher will post, and the teacher in that case is always the author for a lot of different reasons. And I imagine in Mary's case she probably keeps that a, a kind of a lockdown on that too in terms of what students could upload. But the teacher will post um, passages, um, informational text of some kind, and then the students will read and comment on um, different portions of that text. So it really helps a lot with the, um, in the Common Core State Standards, the increase in informational text. So mm -hmm. she can pull like an article um, that's written at the, at the reading level in most cases um, and, and post it or even something from, um, you know, a Time for Kids magazine or something that they would be reading anyway. But mm -hmm. they're going to get experience reading it in a digital format versus you know the hard copy book and then they're all very very into to social media and these are kids at second grade of course that aren't allowed to to really have social media so they're dying they I mean they look at it like as a Facebook Twitter kind of experience because they, the little talk bubbles come up and sure. um, they can what their friends commented um, and of course it is a, a little bit of a lower level you know I think that's cool or this is an interesting part uh, you know it's not as, as sophisticated obviously as older students but it really does work well and it's engaging for the students um, and initially they ha do have smart board technology in, in their classrooms so the way that those second grade teachers introduced it was to really model it a lot with the smart board and then have students come up almost like you would a chart or the chalkboard have students right. come up and model having them um, you know put their comments in and and really coaching them through that to the point so, where now they can do it on their own. Great, Lisa. I'm I'm giving you an example. I'm interrupting you. Um, and oh, please done. please interrupt us as we go here too. But Jenny, I want to get Jenny's voice in. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Jenny Bracinger, and I teach at Ursuline Academy in Blue Ash, in Cincinnati. Um, I have found out about an owl comment from a fellow teacher who I think was at a conference with Lisa and Mary. I primarily use it in AP statistics, so I'm a math teacher, and I think it's a little uncommon to use such a tool in the math classroom, but it really lends itself to allowing me to post readings and mainly current articles that are in the news that connect to whatever the topic is that we are learning in AP statistics and for me I have just loved the reaction of my students to actually see their comments and hear how they are connecting what we're doing in AP statistics math to the real world. Um, I can give you an example of an article yeah. I just posted it was about the correlation between baseball teams and their salaries and their winning records and we just discussed the topic of correlation and Isn't that how uh, they get paid by their records? No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but basically my students use it, I teach in a blended or online learning format where once a week the students do not come to class and they learn online and so I was looking for tools similar or something like now comment where uh, I post the article and I get immediate feedback from the students and see what kind of connections they're making and um, you know the biggest thing for me in switching from discussion based in the classroom to now comment is I get to hear from every student mm -hmm. and there's no more of that cop out of well I was going to say what she said and you see the connections that every student is making not just the ones who are always raising their hands and always commenting when you're having the classroom discussion you get to look and see what every student's thinking and like Dan commented or indicated you can tie comments to the specific sentence a certain paragraph or the entire uh, text so I've really and also I wanted to mention too uh, with what Jenny said about um, hearing from every student it's kind of nice the features that that Dan has um, incorporated more recently or well, the one the teacher features for example you can turn off um, the ability for students to see other students comments for a portion of time so what happens is those kids that always say yeah what he said or what she said or I agree they they really have to like at the college level I found that great because my all of my students had to say something if I turned that feature off 
um, say for the first three days, and they all had to respond within the first three days, then I could turn the feature back on. So they had to respond not knowing what any of their classmates said, um, which really put the, the responsibility back on the individual student. But then for some of my struggling students or the ones that didn't really say the most insightful things, I would turn the comments back on after three days, and then they would respond again. And I could really see, for, for the assessment purpose, I could get a score or a, an understanding of how they interpreted the article themselves. But then I could also open up those comments from other people and, and see how much their understanding changed after they read other people's comments. Mm -hmm. Jenny or Mary or anybody, um, how do you how do you so when when you annotate in now comment, there are two boxes that appear, right? There's a box that allows is it 255 characters, I think, right. and then there's a box that allows endless. Um, I think it's endless. Um, is endless. it endless? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, you can write forever uh, until your fingers get tired. There you go. So how do you how do you deal with those two boxes and? Um, and how do you have your students think about that? Um, what I do with the seventh grade is, um, in the past, I've had them put like main idea in the top box, or put um, a little heart for something that they love, or uh, an exclamation point in the top box, and then they get to explain it in the bottom. Because we, when we've talked about close reading, we've talked about using uh, symbols to annotate. Mm -hmm. And so they will continue those on now comment. I do that a lot, especially at the beginning with students. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. If if I could just jump jump in some and uh, please Dan, yeah. not not to distract, but something you've been you've been talking in terms of annotation, and I, I maybe different people use the words different ways, but mm -hmm. I, I remember. There, there was that idea of, you know, annotation was a little bit kind of dry and factual, and you're kind of, you know, throwing in some additional background, objective, factual kind of stuff. And and now comment works hopefully really well for that. But the other thing I I've, I always use, I always think of it as like conversational, mm -hmm. in, in you know discussion and conversations and now comment because the the, n the nice thing about it for me, or the, the design goal, was to allow real, you know, good conversational back and forth among the students. So someone's, you know, I, I didn't like that, I interpreted this way, and someone said, well, you know, I've got a different background, and for me, that felt really true, and, and you can go back and forth, um, you know, in a real conversational kind of a way. So anyway, I just wanted to just throw that in as we're talking about annotation. I, I think of it in a slightly different sense sometimes. Uh, I have a question for Dan. Go ahead, Chris. Yes. So you, you've been shepherding this site, uh, you know, this concept, I think, probably before it was a site for a while. So I'm just kind of <laughs> curious about your background. Uh, like, what, what made you want to put together something that would allow people to uh, annotate and have conversations around articles? Oh wow! That, that, yeah, it, it's a good question. It's I, I'm I'm afraid the answer would be really long, but I mean the the full answer. I'll give you the short answer. So mm -hmm. my background is um, my wife and I used to used to be in Silicon Valley, and we used to own the world's biggest computer science bookstores. And one of the book and we, and then we kind of spun off a, a small publishing company from that. And one of the things that we did was a, a classic computer science work on the Unix operating system. And it was a commentary. And the guy, you know, here's the source code on one side, and here's you know some annotations, some explanations that matched up. You know, this line 26 says blah 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 blah. And he would write a paragraph or two. And as you're reading the code if you didn't understand something, you just looked off to the side and you know there's your answer, hopefully your answer. So anyway, it, believe I actually didn't make that connection for many years afterwards, but then um, as I used to read for now Common is a project of fairness.com, which is a sort of a public interest group, and we used to have an online database, we still have an online database at fairness.com of all kinds of journalistic articles and Washington Post and New York Times, and it would just frustrate the heck out of me. I'd be reading an article in New York Times or whatever, 
and there'd be something I would see that maybe I wasn't sure if that was really an accurate fact or I, I had a different interpretation and then they'd have like 300 comments down below at the end of the article and you had no idea like is any of these 300 people see the same thing I did is anyone talking about that so the immediate thing was that idea of well comments should be in context so as you're reading you're going down the page you know yeah 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 wait a minute this this is really interesting or this looks wrong or I don't really understand this and then you can go for help and see if any people have anything helpful to say so that's that's the short answer of where now comment came from very cool um, can, can, can you extend that into the current um, situation? Because I noticed that um, <coughs> whenever I talk about other systems and so forth, you're always really interested to kind of keep up to, uh, you know, see what other people are doing. Like, what sustains your interest in this field? That oh, I, I, just, I just love it. <laughs> I mean, I love this form of of communication. I mean, when I was it, when I did the bookstores, I, I used to interview computer science people, and I, I had a couple interviews published in like IEEE Journal, one IEEE Journal, and I, I'm just some like I don't feel like I'm, you know, the smartest or most creative guy around, but I really love to talk to smart, interesting people, and you know, there's nothing makes my day than if I could get five or ten or twenty people you know, all reading this, you know, back to your social reading, if you can get, you know, X number of smart people all talking about the same thing, like nothing, you know, I'd do that instead of, you know, taking crack or whatever, <laughs> whatever is the addictions other people want to have. I, I want to talk, I want to hear smart people say something in ways that I haven't thought of. And one, one, one of the ideas for, uh, for now comment the design goal is that it had to scale. So theoretically you could have, you know, with youth voices, you could have 50 people or 100 people or 200 people and the interface will sustain all those people throwing ideas in and, you know, it's not, it's asynchronous, so it's not real time updating the screen, mm -hmm. which I find kind of distracting. It, it now comment, the model for now comment is reflective thinking. You know, you tell someone, here's an article, think about it for a couple days or three days or a week or whatever, and as you get ideas, go ahead and, oh, I just lost video. Did, are other people seeing a red screen? We're, we're, okay, no, we're good. good. We're good. Um, so, um, I, mean, I like the red screen, but, um, <laughs> so anyway, um, wait, lost where I was going. Um, you were saying something about um, asynchronous Oh, right, 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 right. So, yeah, yeah. So, you're doing it, you know, leisurely over a, an hour or a day or a couple of days or whatever. And, you know, periodically, periodically go back to the document and you see what other people have said. And someone will say something really interesting and you can start riffing on that. Or you can ask them to clarify what they meant because you were interpreting in a different way. And you get these, you know, really good conversations, in, in my experience. So, that, that's why I keep with it. I, I, just, I just love it to death. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts as people are, are listening here. Go ahead, jump in. Any questions, Sarge? Joe, go ahead. Um, I you know, I'm trying. I'm just trying to think of you know where where it's what space will it fit in the class. Um, a couple of things. I like. I like the idea of this being like a different forum for because the blogs are one thing for our kids to have a dialogue and then, um, but this between classmates will be cool because I wanted to run um, whole class Socratic seminar in within the next three weeks and I'm feeling like this is gonna be one method that they're gonna prep the reading native son um, and my APs are gonna read things fall apart mm. so this might be really good for them to do some thinking in the long term I like that too that that idea of putting something out there and letting the kids mull it over um, mm -hmm. And I like that idea of not turning on the comments function for a few days. Um, I guess one of my wonders is uh, for the kids, like I have a lot of long-term, I mean, half my population is long-term English language learners and I've got the gamut. So when we, when we I guess for everyone that's used it, um, 
when the kids put work out there or put themselves out there, like on their blogs, we tell them before you publish, like, oh my God, proof, proof, proof. Um, and this seems like a really intimate way for them to start having these dialogues, these intellectual conversations where they do want to sound smart and they want to, you know, and mine are seniors too. So, I mean, how did you, did you do anything to get them ready for, I guess, maybe not being kind online, but just being confident? Or did you just let them make mistakes? I don't know. It's a complicated question, but yeah. I'll, I'll let the teachers, if they have any comments. I, I'll just say I didn't, yeah. I didn't do any kind of preparation with my students. Um, I've just encouraged them to comment thoughtfully and um, as accurately as they can. Some students are better than others. Um, I do hide the comments so that I can read them and proof them before I open them up to the rest of the students to read and then kind of go back and forth on. Um, I've never had an issue where I've had to censor a comment or um, I'm in an all-girls private school so uh, not, no co-ed <laughs> that might <laughs> have something to do with it? Hmm. I don't know if that's a question or not. In seventh grade, uh, you know, middle schoolers don't always make the best decisions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just say. Um, okay. Luckily at our school we have, we use something called uh, Schoology, which is kind of like, it looks like Facebook. And so we always start out with that with the students and they can make comments um, post things uh, when students are absent and, and so forth, they ask for help. And so they get started on that and if we see something, we, we use it then as a discussion point. Um, we, I always model it for the students. Um, at the beginning, usually what I do is throw out a poem and I ask the students, what are you thinking? And I let them just respond and then we look at those responses, analyze the responses, was it very helpful? and then we could go on to the real work. They, they've been so, good. They've so been fine. So a lot of modeling sounds well, like Well, for seventh grade, sure. yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm, and um, look, uh, j the few days that I've been watching students use it, um, first of all, I'm, I'm totally interested in the um, feeling level of just realizing that somebody else in a different class is reading this with me. Um, so there's just a, there's just like, hot, there's almost like a, a recognition thing that happens, which is useful in itself. <laughs> um, so there's, but then, but then what we've been thinking about, um, the, the social studies teacher that I'm working with around this is, is how to get kids to expand their thinking in that second box. Like, um, and so we're not sure how to do that yet, but modeling is one thing. We've I was going to say modeling, modeling has been very helpful. Um, and it's interesting when the students see what the others write, mm -hmm. then they, especially the higher level students, the, you know, the other students see the higher level thinking from students. They go, Oh wow, that was really good. Yes, that was. That was good. What did you like about it? Okay, so what can you do that would be similar? So it's a lot of talking, um, and I have 120 students, so it's not <laughs> not easy, but they they do get a handle on it very quickly. Mm -hmm. Dan, I um, want to ask a quick tech question though. Is it is it possible if somebody you know if one of my sixth graders or seventh graders does write something nasty to somebody, can I delete it? If I created the if I created yeah. the document, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that is exactly the point. If you it, it's an egalitarian system where whoever uploads the document is in control. So if 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 the teacher uploads the document and a teacher and and a student says something inappropriate, you can you can delete the comment. You can also edit it, and it'll leave an audit trail that it will say it's been edited, and okay. you might maybe take out an, an adjective or two or tone down something. Um, you can also send a private. Anyone can send a private reply. Mm -hmm. Say say it's not egregious where you want to delete it, 
but you can send a private reply and say, hey, Joe, you might want to tone it down a little bit. You know, That's Billy might take yeah. offense. Um, so, and the students can do that with each other, too. They can privately. It's, it, it's a little bit hidden because we don't, you know, this is about group communication, so we don't really emphasize that private communication aspect, but, but it is available. Uh, I have a another kind of technical question then. Sure. So I, uh, you know, I just had my students do their first work today on it, yeah. and um, so what I did was I, I watched a couple of your videos uh, about how to use the site, and I noticed that you can just invite anybody to comment on an article. Yep. So then um, what I did was I just pasted their emails into that invitation box, and I thought then. Like, oh, was I supposed to create a class or something first? But um, I think they were able, once they were invited, they can just go in and um, an or you know annotate or have conversations, right? Correct. Yeah, I'll just I'll mention that really briefly. You, if someone, including a student, once you have a now comment account, you can invite the whole world. You can invite a million people if you want. Um, it's a little bit of an unwieldy number, but um, you could. So, you know, you can invite colleagues in other schools, your sister-in-law, your cousin, whatever. Um, you can invite anyone you want to participate, and they can see the document when you invite them to it. If they want to make a comment themselves, then they have to get a free account, uh, okay. which is just, you know, what's your name, what's your email address, and you promise not to crash the system. Or you jump in with your Google account. Um, yeah, and, and also so you can use LT, if you guys know LTI, you can interface to Moodle or Blackboard or you know any LMS, or you can use Facebook or you can use Google to validate and you know authenticate and not have to create you know the whole account as well. Because yeah, I I think that's probably a conscious design design decision, but I thought that was interesting that students didn't have to create an account to do anything. You know, like they could actually get farther into the site without having to create an account first thing. Yes. Yeah. It it used to be the other way. It used to be if you invited someone to a document, the first thing they had to do is create an account, and and that was just always you know I mean it's an ADD society and it's an obstacle and some people are like oh, I don't even know what this is, forget it, and they just wouldn't just never saw what it was. So we now let people go to the document, and read other people's stuff and read the document, and then they don't. And then when they make a comment is when they have to, you know, name an email address. And then we then validate it to keep spammers off the system. So, um, and Chris, could I jump on that too? Um, in that there is a youth voices group, as you might imagine. Mm -hmm. um, and if you invite the stu your students to the youth voices group, um, I think you're if if you're not in there yet, you will be um, as a manager, or whatever the, it is called. Um, but and then when students um, find an article or something that they want to share with that whole group, they can then just share with Youth Voices, right? Um, yeah, yeah. It, so that's it, that's just, one way to. Yeah, for I was going to add to that for efficiency, mm -hmm. it, for, for from the teacher's point of view or or anyone's point of view, the most efficient thing to do if you have a whole bunch of people is to create a group one time and you call it Youth Voices or you know Utah Ninth Grade or whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it a group. Right. And then you invite the students, it's like an email alias, you invite them one time to be part of the group. And then from that on, that time on, instead of having to invite 25 or 30 or 100 people individually, you just share a new document with the group. And you could have two groups. You could have the, you know, the morning group and the afternoon group, and then you just invite two groups to the document. And, you know, you can keep it very modular. You can do the same thing with work groups or teams within your class you could have some you know three four person groups for say peer reviewing each other's papers and they share that you know to their peer group and after it passes muster then they can then share it with the broader class group so you have a lot of that flexibility with the built-in group structure very cool. Uh, worth mentioning because I, 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 compared to other things like Crocodile or something like that, for example, for example, all of the links stay live, all of the media stays live. You can embed media, like if there's an article inside, an, uh, I'm sorry, a video inside an article, that copies and pastes really nicely into 
Um, now comment. Um, yeah, with video, videos, you, videos you have to copy and paste the embed code. You, it, a lot of a lot of a lot of sites changed the way they did it. We used to work. You could just copy the the media player, but that doesn't work so well now, and you just have to copy and paste the embed code. Okay, but I've been Image. I've been I've been copying stuff just from. Oh, the, good. It, it well, may, right maybe in. that's you. I just we usually just test with YouTube. And do you use Vimeo? Maybe. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> There's anyway, been different that, things like the fine. New York Times videos drop in, and I've oh, okay. Oh, good. Okay. Videos. Good. 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 <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 It'll handle images and videos as well as text of you know pretty much all rich text and bolds and underlines and all that kind of stuff. So um, just to say one, so Chris and um, and then let's um, open this back up to a lot of other people talking here. Um, Chris and Joe in particular, and my kids are going to get there. Um, but you know they're a little younger. Um, are working on research projects. So one of the things that I do, um, you may have noticed, your students may have noticed, is that I will see that. Oh, so one example. Um, one of your students, Chris, um, wrote recently about uh, will we run out of resources? And there was an article about we won't run out of resources. So I found I found the article, popped it into now comment, and then put the link on his post, and right, and then invited him to come talk there with my students who might be interested in that topic too. So just to say that um, we're we're really interested in students finding individual passionate issues that they want to explore over time, and then finding each other around all those, and so. To, to whatever degree we can, I don't know what, what it would be called, but make the connections for them, I think that's one way we might use this. And um, yeah. just to kind of talk about my use of it today, um, you know the guy, um, not everyone might be familiar with Paul Salopek and his seven-year walk across the world mm -hmm. um, that he's documenting it on National Geographic um, in the magazine and, and some other media. So, uh, you know, it's been pretty fascinating where he is right now. Um, so right now he's on the border of Syria and Turkey, and um, his latest dispatch was about a refugee camp there. So Paul's students first uh, made some comments on a short little um, article, and then today I had my students uh, comment on that article. You're, you're in the same one, then. Good. Yeah, so, so I'm. I was worried uh, about that. But go ahead, yeah. I'm uh, pasting that into the chat room okay. right now. Um, so it was kind of interesting how, um, like, the class that I did that with is a photography class, and I just said, okay, these students in New York have um, made some comments on this article, and we should connect with them. Uh, but I thought it was kind of interesting how a lot of them, you know, like they without me telling them, they kind of uh, seem to focus a lot on the images and the, what the images tell, the story that the images tell. Um, yeah, so I thought that was, I mean, it's my, my first day today on the site, but um, it seems encouraging some of the conversation that is just um, being seeded so far. Oh, good. Um, just a couple, couple just really quick thoughts. Um, one thing that you can do, that the document owner can do, let's say that, um, let's say that, that you, uh, you have a student who posts that article, is the world going to run out of resources? And you mentioned that you, you could post a comment and saying, you know, here's a link to another article that maybe takes a contrary point of view. Hmm. Um, if that student likes that article, what the student can also do is they can append a new article on top of the old one, or not on top of, you know, append it to the old one. So you can get like kind of like this running narrative, kind of like a blog. Um, and again, now you don't do it as the teacher, each document owner controls their own document. But say if there's a new article that the student comes across, they can kind of curate their own document and keep adding new material and new perspectives, add photos, add videos. And just make the document, you know, kind of keep it current if if they want to. 
up to up to a size limit where the document just gets unwieldy, you know, to be in memory and it's just too long for people to work with. Right. Um, there's a question in the chat room. Great. Yeah, let's hear. And um, it's uh, Gail is asking: um, Is now comment a Google extension? Uh, no, Google, now comment is um, it's a freestanding software tool that you know hooks into LMSs and you know can hook into things, but it's not um, it's not a Google extension. But it's it basically we we can authenticate all the work is being done on our servers, and um, so you log in, you upload documents to our servers. Um, I don't know we in. I don't know if we should show us just a sample documents of people like you guys have all seen it. I don't know if other people watching this would want to see what a now comment document looks like or not. But uh, anyway, the, the documents are on our server, and all the work is being done on our servers. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm, I'm, I think behind that comment uh, was uh, that need it needs to be explained that when you find. A an article or something that you you need to then copy and paste it into now comment. Um, I think that that needs um, to be clear. It's not like it's not like an annotation that plugin that that works right on on some right. You upload if it's a, if it's a HTML if it's HTML content you copy and paste it. If it's a Microsoft Word file you upload it. If it's a PDF. You you don't want to copy and paste PDFs. They they turn out ugly. <laughs> you have to convert them, or you know we have a built-in converter where everyone gets a few free pages, and then um, it, we use a third-party tool. So um, anyway, we're limited in how many we can make available for free. But um, anyway, um, that, that's how you get content onto our server. There was some feedback in the chat room again where someone said yes, please show a do now. Uh, and do you want to hook that up? And uh, as you're doing it, do you you, you know how to, are you ready? I, I'm to trying to remember how to how to how to screen share. Wow. I've got a document queued up. It's one of Mary's. It, this is like a a sample of of something that Mary had a really good reaction to with her middle schoolers. Um, so how, uh, how so it's I, a green button in the t in the left. Uh, what's that called over there? Column. It'll come up as you. Oh, the, the quote, apostrophes quote marks. Um, it's a green arrow or a white arrow and a green background in the left toolbar, which uh, appears when you move your cursor across. It's maybe not there yet. Ah, okay. Uh, I see it. Okay, I think I see it. Oh, I can't make it stay there. <laughs> green. So, Mary, do you want to? Any thoughts? That, any warnings? Any thoughts? Any ideas? As a more experienced user of this. As as Dan's hooking this up, uh, I don't I don't really have any warnings. Um, I mean I have I've had great success with it, um, and so I I can't say that. I don't let the students post their own work only because of their ages and the laws with their stuff out there. Um, so I do the posting. The only time I have ever put any student work up there was when we were writing um, that's me that's yeah it's okay Sorry. You're there we were, <laughs> I know ah! we were writing um, introduction and I didn't put anybody's name and I just copy pasted different introductions and the students commented back and it was actually kind of funny because they were like well, wait a minute that one didn't have as, ma as many comments as the other and so we looked at those, and it was because those introductions were really good. And the only comments they had were, wow, you did a really great job. And then the other ones were mentioning things that they missed. So, um, But the students didn't know whose unless you spoke up and said, that's mine. Hmm. Um, well, so I've, got, I've got Mary's document up. Whenever. Yeah, go for it. Uh, yeah. We, that, that looked good, Dan. Talk about it. Yeah. OK. Mary, do you want to tell them about your document? Yeah, I don't see it though. Oh, there it is. Um, yeah, we have been reading every year. We we tend to read this book called uh, Omnivore's Dilemma, hmm. and so I bring in nonfiction articles. And this one's about the father of the chicken nugget. 
Do you do you read like the middle school version of that book? Uh huh. Yeah, okay. Yes, actually, and and sad for me this year. This is the first year we won't be reading. I won't be reading it. I'm the long story. Not going to go there. But anyway, <laughs> I'll go there for a second. Come on, what, what happened? Oh no 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 no. We're Wait, you're not allowed to? You're kidding. Well, no, it's the the middle school um, where I teach. They have changed the special ed model, and so three teaching teams are expected to be teaching the same content, not at the same time. So the other teachers don't think it's valid, and I think they're being crazy. So. I got you. No, no, that's a really <laughs> – that would be a great uh, conversation sometime. Yeah, how hard, it is, how hard it is to collaborate and, yeah, oh. respect each other and all that. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, it, anyway. So when you were doing it yourself. <laughs> when I was doing that, I um, actually paired up with a science teacher. And um, this article I came across, and it was just, you know, I put it up there as just, uh, you know, talking about McDonald's and – the chicken nugget and the so student. So can you read the title? Because somebody may be just listening to this. Sure. Yeah. Well, it it's appears. a great title, but. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. I, I I don't have it up in front of me, but oh, it's. It's the I, father of the chicken nugget. Robert yeah. C. Baker was a poultry savant. Yeah. But his contribution so, to fast food has been erased from the history books. Go ahead. Yeah. So it's basically saying he started. He's the one that came up with a chicken nugget, and then uh, it was kind of taken from or by McDonald's, kind of, so. Mm -hmm. um, so it talks about that. And the students, of course, very intriguing article because how many of them go to McDonald's? And we had been discussing um, the foods. And so um, the students just loved it. So they would pick a paragraph and make a comment. And um, they commented, you could see down near the bottom where some of them were coming back and forth. They Dan, were can you scroll on the right side a little bit? or? Yeah, well, this this is the, Mary's class document had like a hundred comments on it. They were really okay. going back and forth. But as a demo document, I just chose right. like a few sample just to not overwhelm people, mm -hmm. and we changed the names. <laughs> <laughs> but she, Mary's talking about these three, where like one of the students says, uh, "What is it? it? It's pink paste, and it's not chicken." And then another student says, "Wait, but you said it was one percent chicken. So is it chicken or is it not chicken?" And the guy says, "Well, yeah, but it is chicken, but not much, or something like that." <laughs> but it was, it was very. And then Mary and I used to joke. One, one of the students was like, "There's this part of the article where they talk about what goes into a chicken nugget, which I won't go into here." <laughs> but the, the 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 girl was like, "Ooh!" And it, that "ooh" just filled all the way across the screen. <laughs> and it was just I, I use this document a lot because. Her students were just really clearly very, very engaged. Um, so I, I, I want to. That's so far what what has been fascinating to me is like this is a place where alongside of reading, we can have these more. I don't know what to call them. Chatty, you said conversational earlier. Um, moments, right? So I mean, yeah. we're so interested in. I don't know detailed, long, interesting writing, and, and I am too, but there's something valuable about being able to say, ooh, too, right? <laughs> well, I think, I yeah. think yeah. there is, but I'd also, I also say to them that I want this to be thoughtful. Um, mm. So it doesn't have to be a, a page, but I do want thoughtful, deep thinking, and not just an ooh, but if you have an ooh, then you ooh, you know, that's fine. Yeah, well, she, she oohed, and then she went on to give a short paragraph explaining what the oo was all about. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Let me. While this is, I'm going to stop screen sharing in a second, maybe. But I just, I just want to point out just just really basic, quick things for those who've never seen it before. Mm -hmm. um, these 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 word balloons, these kind of bubbles that are off to the right hand side of the left pane. That that tells you what passages have comments on them and when you click one of those they say as you're reading down the page and you come to something that you're you know just because something has comments you may not be interested in them and you may skip them but when you come across something that is of interest like this one comment that's on paragraph number eight mm -hmm. I'm gonna click that one the the word balloon 
and you see how it scrolled a little bit and it turned yellow mm -hmm. I'll do it again so when you when you see something in the article in the pa in a passage that you're interested in with one click it'll scroll this right hand side and you can immediately see what anyone else in the class or anyone else in the group had to say about that thing so it's really interactive really kind of you know when you're curious about something you you really get to see what other people are thinking and and that that's pretty cool and you can do the same thing on the other side if you you some people like to skim comments mm -hmm. and they say oh what's that talking about and you click on paragraph 27 and it'll skim to the article and you can see what what they were talking about anyway there's 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 all kinds of features you can, a teacher or you know document owner can assign you know you can you must make a minimum of three comments I don't want to have more than ten the software will enforce that you can give a, a due date the software will stop any comments from being made after that date you can send an email an automatic email reminder if it's due Friday noon you might want to send out something uh, Wednesday afternoon reminding them they have two more days to get their comments in there's just all kinds of one of the things I always mention is you can sort the comments mm -hmm. so you can it makes it easy to assess you know who's doing what kind of participation not just how many you're not just tallying their comments but you can oh, I'm going to sort it by their person's last name um, yeah it's not only assess like it's also you know just find out what else she thought you know yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. well yeah and all the students might want to say well you know Joe seems to really have a lot of interesting things to say let me look at everything Joe had to say and just see all of his comments in one place mm -hmm. um, anyway there's there's lots and lots and lots of features and I won't really take time for that but but it is I, I think it's as fully featured as any you know conversational tool out there Jenny, did did you want to jump in and say anything? I just want. To, yeah. um, I was just gonna say that I feel like it's very user friendly as a teacher. I think it's very easy to set up, to invite the students, set up your group. Um, I've had very few issues using it the way I want to use it. And a little plug for Dan: anytime I do have an issue, I shoot him in the email, and he is so responsive. He's a friendly guy, isn't he? Yes, to help oh, you figure out how to, people. <laughs> how to make it work better or, you know, just what am I doing wrong? And um, mm -hmm. I wish I could get more of my faculty and staff engaged on it. Some of them are just too afraid of technology, but I really think it's so easy and user-friendly that um, kudos to Dan. No, thanks. Well, I'm, I'm really, Lisa, you, you've got to just keep pushing the people in Reading. They're, those are the, Reading, Ohio is where the second graders used it. And um, what they did, the teacher, you know, the, her second graders don't have email. And our site used to require an email address, but we now have a way that, you know, classes or, or people that don't have email, if, they, if they're invited by someone with an account, we can we have basically made the site work for people that don't have email so anyway uh, once the school year is a little bit further in someone from Reading this is second grade class or whatever is going to use it and then we can you know tell everyone well second graders have no trouble with it so you know you'll be fine do you Dan do you have any other examples of, of um, cro across school across institutions using it the way we hope to um, the way Chris students already started to well there isn't it it's it it hasn't been done. That, that's one of the things I'm so excited about the the youth voices. Um, mm -hmm. I could show there's a there's an early um, an academic collaboration among like university scholars, um, you know, at Cambridge and University of Virginia and Toronto, and mm -hmm. they they were playing around with it. In the early early days of now comment, and it wasn't as smooth. And this is really like five years ago. And they stopped using it. And I haven't been able to persuade them to come back, right. but it, um, it it's already you know you maybe if you talk about something else I'll um, yeah I'll, that's I'll pull okay. it up and that's, you can see that's it. enough of an answer I, that, okay. that, that, that's cool yeah um, can in your comment can you put HTML can you put a link does that yes. show up yeah okay yeah it's a lot it'll be live and and people can click on it. also in the document um, right. 
oh, oh, before I forget, just super quick. There was something in one of your, in one of the <coughs> earlier weeks. There was there was one sort of a misunderstanding, where a, a question came up about what kind of materials can be used on now comment, mm -hmm. and I think you know, someone said you know kind of journal articles and kind of formal formal kinds of things, but you know a lot of people just use their own student writing, um, and you know you can you can put anything up there. Um, I'm going to show for a writing because I know the National Writing Project project is something that you know you folks are also interested in. This is an example of some workshopping being done at um, Emory University mm -hmm. in, in Atlanta, and this is a creative writing class. Pleb, I think it's a, a scene writing class, and um, so the students were in. You know, it's a class of like 20, and there were like seven three-person groups, and they would. Uh, peer review each other's writing. By the way, you, I don't know if you can see, you can you can control the screen, and yeah, I could show this all in one pane if I wanted to, but I like the two pane view. Anyway, so this is an example of peer writing. So it doesn't have to be just journal articles or any so particular. So there's one author of the document, and then other, and peer others yeah, this, are commenting yeah, on it. Uh -huh. Exactly. The guy's name is uh, Riakim, and he wrote an article about chess club, and then it's being critiqued by Emily and Grace maybe mm -hmm. just yeah I think it's three person groups so just just those two and they're giving him feedback and then if, if he has a question um, you know he can ask them to clarify and they can expand more or he can say well here's what I had in mind and they can say well yeah I can see that but I still think it's a little confusing blah 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 someone else can jump in and say well why don't you try doing it this way that way, and again, it's, it's real conversations going on. Worth saying that any comment is that what they're called on the right side um, also, uh -huh. also has a, a URL attached to it, and you can you Correct. can email that to somebody. Or uh, you know, we're using Correct. we're using Google Classroom, so I have kids turn their annotations in right mm -hmm. um, oh, with okay. with that URL. So okay, so here's the assignment: make five annotations on this article. And they have to turn in those five uh, URLs um, on Google yep. Classroom. So um, yeah, so but now, but, 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 but just, yeah. just to ask, just ask the, is there an advantage to that versus you, if you go in there and 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 do the sorted view? Um, not much, except that it keeps it all in one place. That's all. <laughs> oh, I mean, you oh, well, you also have, I guess, a different record for each kid, maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's. Well, the, the other thing I should mention at the end of it. Across documents, or for a whole term, or just for three documents, whatever, you can run a report. We call it the multi-doc report, and you can you can run reports that say, you know, show me all the comments for these twelve documents. Mm -hmm. And so you you could also generate that at any can you point. Do it, can you do it by student? Show me yeah. all the comments. Oh, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. You run all the comments and you sort it all these different ways. You can you can sort comments by first name, by last name, by the date the comment was made, and you can also tag comments. So say if you're doing writing and you could make, you know, if you have a comment, you know, on, on this, this article, this this creative writing that you guys are peer reviewing, mm -hmm. you can say is my comment about grammar, is it about word choice, is it about, you know, whatever. And then you could sort, let me see all the grammar comments, let me see all the word choice, vocabulary comments. Stuff so, like that. I think it's a measure of how much of a geek I am. I just I want I want to keep talking about, <laughs> but but we're running out of time. And I want to come back to like why we do all this a little bit. Um, could we go around and, um, Joe? I want to start with you. You mentioned Socratic dialogue. Like, what is Socratic dialogue? Very briefly, and like, how how are you seeing this fit in? Um, but I'm seeing. This is for final comments here, folks. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So what I'm envisioning right now um, is that I can upload um, a few parts of the first, uh, the rat scene, the opening scene of Native Son for my kiddos, mm -hmm. and potentially have this. I like this idea of groups working on different pieces of it, um, doing close readings together, and then having giving the students time to read those comments before we walk into a Socratic seminar. And I feel like maybe that'll, that would, the Socratic seminar is a whole class discussion so facilitated, and I'm just videotaping it. I'm not even in it. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a lot of the students really having to take initiative. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm excited to see how this might impact 
the, the I guess the level of student talk. Thanks, Joe. Chris, and then we'll hear from um, Jenny and Mary. As we yeah, I mean, I would one. piggyback <laughs> off what Joe just said. That um, I mean, the, my initial use of it was just to uh, foster more conversation um, with other students in another school about something halfway across the world. So yeah, it was it was part annotation and part conversation. Yeah. That socialized teacher, uh, her name is uh, Ms. Procton, uh, Melissa Procton. She came up with a great question about that project, by the way, which is, um, what can you learn about culture through somebody else's eyes, which I think is a really interesting. Like, And so, like, using Paul Salafek as a, I don't know, a way to understand culture is really interesting. But, yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot to go there. Jenny, final comments here. You're muted. Am I good now? There you go. There you go. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Me, it's just been a fabulous tool to see my students make connections. And the pace of an AP class is so quick that we don't always have the time mm -hmm. to do the discussions in the classroom. And so it's a way for me to get that relatable material to them outside of class. Interesting. Thank you. And Mary, last thoughts. Um, well, besides what you've seen, what my students have done, um, one other thing that I do love about now, now Comet is that it gives the students the time to think. They don't always, you know, sometimes seventh graders will just blurt it out. Um, and this way now it's, it's just more thoughtful. And it helps with, um, I don't know, good comments, good conversations. I would totally agree with that, that when they, they're put on the spot in class, quickly having to read an article and then throw their thoughts out there, they can take their time on now comment. They've got plenty of time to read it. They can go at their own pace. And then they can really think critically and close read the article or the prompt that you're giving them. So I totally agree with Mary. Dan, thank you so much. You, you Last word here, though, if you'd like something. Oh, um, <laughs> gee. Um, no, th thank you for inviting us, and, and I, thanks to the, the teachers from Ohio. I really appreciate it. Um, the, um, I, I guess it, it's, mo I'll just mention it's most commonly used probably, you know, in conjunction with face-to-face -face conversation in class. It, mm -hmm. uh, it, it often gives the students a chance to kind of, it's kind of like a pre-digesting pass and you know some teachers grade with their comments some don't but it just kind of have them have them make the comments and then when they come to class discussion they've thought about it maybe they someone threw out an idea and another student said well I don't think that's going to quite work because so and so and then the time hopefully you know doesn't get wasted not wasted but you know you have a little bit more high level class discussion because some of the some of the not good ideas have been kind of filtered out by the group already. Yeah, and I'm thinking I'm thinking it'd be a great thing to do before we had some of these live things with between students too, um, meaning some of these hangouts, so that um, we've read an article together and now let's have a hangout about it is a possibility too. At any rate, um, thank you all for your time tonight. Um, we're here every Wednesday. Um, next week we uh, have a bunch of educators who are doing a different kind of annotation but um, on Genius um, and uh, they're going to come talk about that um, so there's more to think about around annotation and so forth. Dan, thank you so much um, and you know we'll be in touch. Um, yes, and thank, thank you guys very much. I really appreciate and, it. And Lisa, thank you too and Jenny. Um, and um, we're saying that uh, we uh, broadcast here over the EdTech Talk channel of the World Bridges Network that um, Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier set up, oh, I don't know, about 10 years ago or so. Um, <laughs> thank you all for coming here tonight, and uh, we'll see you soon. Good night. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night.